So there are three different ways broadly of running Python code. Everything we've been doing up till now has been within the interactive environment. As I say, you can think of this as a, a large calculator, a very powerful calculator. It's useful for testing small functions, for writing little code snippets and figuring out what Python does. But as we've seen, it's not great for typing large bits of code because if you make a mistake, you have to retype everything again. Um, and you won't know you've made a mistake until after you've run it and typed it all again. So you end up with a lot of retyping. Um, it's a very sort of transient place of working. So it's great as a little notepad to sketch things out and try things uh, before you commit them to a text document. But uh, in the long run, when you're developing uh, more useful functions, what you're going to be doing is writing either modules or scripts. Now, both modules and scripts are just text documents that contain a bunch of Python code. Uh, the difference is a module is a bunch of code that defines some functions. So if you want to define a few functions that are useful for you to use within your environment, that are useful for a specific task you're doing, then you will create a module. If you want to just write some code in a text editor to run again and again, that just runs a few commands, it doesn't define any functions necessarily, then we'll call that a script. The, the border between the two is fuzzy, but one you will load in as a bunch of modules, a bunch of functions to be used, and the script you will just run, perhaps not even from within inside Python, and it will run the, uh, the uh, commands within the code. So we'll see, um, we'll see both. But so far we've been only working in the interactive environment and as many of you have seen, having to retype everything, it's not great. So when we're working with modules, first I want to show you how to import a module and what importing a module means. So if I, for example, try and run the square root command, nothing happens, it errors. We don't know what a square root command is. However, I can do import math, and then I can run math.square root, and I see uh, that I actually can get the square root of this number now, and what the import math does is it imports the math module. So there's a module called math, it's pre-installed with all Python installations, and then I do import math, and now I have a bunch of new and useful functions and variables defined by that module which I can make use of. So I do import math, I can then do math.square root. Uh, I can also do exponentials and logarithms and a bunch of other things. I won't go into everything that the math module has, but it's useful. Um, modules don't just define functions, they can also define variables. So we see that now that I've imported math, the math.py variable has been defined. Uh, and so we can see how this import math might be useful. Now there's two different ways of importing modules. If you only want to make use of a single function from within a module, you might not want to do import math and then do math.square root you might just want to do from math import square root and that will just import the square root function for use uh, within your function. Uh, you can do from math import star but I don't encourage you to do that. That might uh, replace a bunch of variables you already have defined, um, clogs up your workspace with a bunch of stuff. It's better to just do from math import and then the name of the one function you need. Now I need to make clear um, a difference so if I do, so I'm in my terminal, I've not imported any modules. If I do math.square root, nothing works. And if I do square root, nothing works. So um, I can do import math. So now I can do math.square root. I can't just do square root because it doesn't know what module to look for. So I've imported math, but then to call the functions from within the math module, I have to do math.square root. Alternatively, I'm actually going to exit out, so start with a new environment. Whoops, exit like that. So now, once again, nothing is defined. Square root doesn't exist. Math.square root doesn't exist. Uh, but alternatively, I can do from math import square root. Now it hasn't imported the whole math module. It's imported just the square root function 
and I don't have to tell it that it's in the math module. So I don't have to do math.square root if I import things this way. I just have to do square root. So math.square root 25 doesn't work this way. So to recap, if I do from math import square root, I call it using just square root like this. If I do import a module, then I have to do module name dot function name. So there are two different ways of doing the same thing, uh, depending on how much you're going to make use of a module. So if I do from math import square root, I can just call that function using its name. The function has been imported as if I defined it myself. It's no longer required to be part of that module. If, however, I do import math, whenever I call a function from within the math module, I have to tell Python that I'm calling it from the math module, math.square root 25. So both of these are perfectly valid. Uh, which one you use will depend on if you're making a wide use of the math module within a function, you're probably just going to do import math. If you only want the one function for use for one task, then you'll probably do from math import square root and then just call it directly. But be aware of the difference between the two. Anyone lost by that? I know it's kind of strange. Okay, cool. Is there, so like using a Google math module Yeah, there's a, a, a big API, a huge bunch of functions you can use. Okay, so now we're going to start working within a text editor, so we never have to retype all of our code when we make a mistake. A little bit about working in a text editor. Uh, you want to use the most basic text editor you can for now. I wouldn't encourage you to begin learning different uh, development environments. They might provide useful code highlighting and stuff, but you'll end up learning the development environment before you've learned the language. It's better to get familiar with the language with a very basic environment first. Don't be, uh, so you can use Notepad in Windows, don't be tempted to use Microsoft Word or anything. You know, we want a very basic text editor that doesn't have any formatting. Uh, text edit works totally fine on the Mac. If you're a Linux nerd like me, you'll like Emacs or Vim or something, but uh, use whichever text editor uh, is simple and that you're familiar with. Some notes about working with a text editor, uh, especially text edit, there's a couple of things that can catch people out. Smart quotes are the bane of our existence. If you uh, have smart quotes on, Python will actually convert your quotes from quotes that Python can read to fancy in quotes and out quotes that Python sees as strange symbols and doesn't know what to do with. So before you type anything into your uh, text editor, we're going to turn off smart quotes. Let me just show you the other things you might want to turn off. So if I go to text edit, I'm going to start a new document. Yours might not look like this. Yours might look like this. We don't want it to look like this because we don't want bold and fonts. Python doesn't know what to do with any of that. We want it to be the most basic text editor we can. So go to Format, Make Plain Text. Hit that and all your formatting toolbar should go away. And the other thing you should do is go to Edit and Substitutions and you can feel free to untick everything here. But specifically, smart quotes. If you have smart quotes on, this quote, believe it or not, is different from the quote without smart quotes. Python can't deal with these and can deal with these. So make sure you do edit substitutions and turn off smart quotes and anything else you might want to turn off. So hopefully now you should have a text editor that looks like this. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to write our commands into that text editor. We're going to save our file with the .py extension, and then we should be good to go. Uh, when you save it, uh, you can save it. If you're on a Mac, you can save it in your home directory, and uh, the Python will know to look for it there. That's the directory with the house. You can, uh, it should have your name with a little house symbol before it. If you're on Windows, you can place the file in whichever directory you are running Python from. So when you look at your command line, it should say c colon backslash users backslash Simon. And then you typed Python, you got into the Python environment. If you put your Python code in c colon backslash users backslash Simon, then Python can find it. 
So put it in the same place that you're launching Python from. If you need help figuring this out, I'll come around and help. Uh, but basically, your home directory or whichever directory you're launching Python from is the, is the best place to put your code. So we're going to combine everything we learned and write a, a function that does some stuff with a sequence. First, as I say, I want to think about the pseudocode uh, of doing what I want to achieve. I'm going to write a function that takes a sequence as a parameter. Lots of the functions we've been working with so far have done that. So it's going to have some input parameter that's going to be some string. Uh, I want to print the sequence out if the sequence starts with ATC. If the sequence starts with AGC, I'm going to print the actual word that it's starting with AGC instead. And if the sequence starts with neither ATC nor AGC, I'm going to print starting with neither ATC nor AGC. So we have three different scenarios, and you might guess we're going to make use of if statements and functions uh, to do this. So here's what the code looks like, and on the bottom half is how to run it. Uh, Everything I said previously about new lines and indentations still applies in the text editor. Anything that's in line on my screen, you should try and keep in line on your screen using tabs to indent things. Uh, the, the only thing you, there's a couple of things that are new here. The first is what we call code comments. So I start by defining my function. We've seen this before, def starts with ATC, has some input seek, colon new line indentation. Then I've put some code comments. Now these are little bits of text that Python is going to ignore. Python ignores any line that starts with a pound sign, and this allows us to write little notes to ourselves. I encourage you to make good use of code comments. As you are copying examples from the board, and as you learn what each line does, um, once something clicks in your head, write a code comment by it to remind you what it does. It's going to really help when you come back to look at your code later down the road. Code comments don't slow down your code. They don't have any impact on performance. They just help you and anyone else that's going to use your code figure out what's going on. So write as many code comments as you want. So I've written a code comment to tell me what my function is doing, basically recapping what I showed on the previous slide. Then I just have an if statement. So if my sequence dot starts with ATC, we know that's going to be true if my sequence starts with ATC. I'm going to print the sequence. Now previously we've seen if statements and else statements. This uh, elif can be thought of as saying else if. So it's just an abbreviation of else if. So if our sequence starts with ATC, let's print the sequence. Else, if our sequence starts with AGC, let's print that it starts with AGC. And then we have one final else, where we print that it starts with neither ATC nor AGC. So that's the logic. We can have if, L if, so else if, and it will only do the second thing if the first thing wasn't true. So if the sequence starts with ATC, do something else. If the sequence didn't start with ATC, let's check if it starts with AGC. Else, if it didn't start with either of those things, let's print the final thing. Okay, so when you've written that, let's save it. I've saved mine as workshop.py. I saved it in my home directory. Keep an eye on the file extension. Your text editor might try and make it a .rtf or something that Python can't interpret. It can help you figure that out. And then once you have written it, we're going to go back into our interactive environment. You can see that I'm back in my interactive environment because I have these arrows at the start of my line. If I try and run that function that I just wrote, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because I haven't imported it. I haven't imported the module yet. So then what I'm going to do is do from workshop import starts with ATC. Now I called my file workshop.py, so that's the name of my module, from workshop, import, and then the name of the function that I want to import. And the name of the function is starts with ATC. So whatever you wrote here as your function name is what you're going to write here. And whatever you saved your file as, mine was workshop.py, is what you will write here. So from workshop import starts with ATC, I can then run starts with ATC and give it the inputs that I want to give it uh, in brackets and in quotes. 
So whatever I type here will be passed as the variable seek, and then the actual function will make use of that seek um, variable with the values that I've given it. So seek will, will be set equal to ATC, AT whatever this time, and then it will check whether that sequence starts with ATC. It does, so it's going to print the sequence, and then it will finish. You'll notice this function doesn't have a return statement in it. There's no outputs. All, that, all my function is doing is printing stuff, printing different things in different conditions. And I encourage you to run that with one input that starts with ATC, one input that doesn't, and one input that starts with AGC, and you should see different results from the same function each time.